on your bark a cinch. How much longer are you going to sleep, dear? <laughs> Probably not a lot, I suspect. Well, I haven't slept a wink. I heard you snoring. I've had a night of mental anguish. Didn't sound like mentally anguished snoring. You know me, Richard. I haven't a snobbish bone in my body. <laughs> but I do find it irritating that those Barker finches at number 23 should attract the Douglas Chater to their barbecue. Uh, the Douglas what? Chater. They had him at their barbecue. Now, what did he taste like? Now, don't be silly, dear. They had him at their barbecue, and of course, she can't stop telling everybody. I cannot abide people who run around making a meal out of their little social triumphs. <laughs> Answer me. I'm sorry, Days. I can't talk owing to the fact that some fool keeps prodding me. That's me. I'm prodding you. I want to know why have you started staying out so late? Look at me, Onslow. <laughs> Straight in the eyes. Where were you last night? I was here, in bed. Not when I went to sleep, you weren't. Oh, nice. You were so worried you went to sleep. <laughs> it was exhaustion caused by anxiety, mental exhaustion. I was going mad wondering where you were. How's your father this morning? Don't change the subject. Ideas <laughs> about their station. Sonia Barker Finch. Her conversation could hardly have been stimulating. P. Douglas Chater must have ended up with a barbecued brain. Oh, B. Douglas Chater. Richard, you must have heard of the Douglas Chater. Well, all morning from you. <laughs> he only happens to be Chater's building supplies. Oh, he sells cement. One of our leading builders' merchants. What's this in my dish? That's an exclusive European high-fibre breakfast cereal. Well, it looks as if it's come from the Douglas Chater. I mean, this is a... This is a building material, if ever I saw one. Richard, stop playing with it, dear, and eat it. Well, why can't I have my usual cornflakes? This is not a cornflake establishment. <laughs> it always has been. Perhaps in the days before this exclusive European high-fibre breakfast cereal was made available. Now, it's very nutritious and highly recommended. By whom? The Dutch royal family. <laughs> Dutch royal family. There's a crest on the packet. Oh, God. I wish you'd stop buying things because there's a crest on the pack. So, in future, when people ask you what you have for breakfast, don't say cornflakes. Tell them quite truthfully that you eat an exclusive European high-fibre breakfast cereal. 
with a crest on the packet. <laughs> with a couple of the lads. Till what time? I don't know. We got talking. You know what it's like when you get with the lads? I know what it's like when you get with the lads. You become a menace to the female sex. <laughs> Daisy, that was 20 years ago. I admit I used to be a bit of a menace with the female sex. I was dynamite. <laughs> to me, the Karma Sutra was an owner's manual. <laughs> but I'm retired these days. I wish I could be sure. You're so attractive to women. <laughs> Shy, bone idle, and out of condition. What makes you think I'm attractive to women? I married you, didn't I? <laughs> when I was younger. You were still bone idle, work shy, and out of condition. Oh, yeah. But I was better dressed. <laughs> bit interested, of course, but uh, did you by any chance get to that barbecue? Barbecue? Mm. Do you know, it's the strangest thing. I never spill anything at a barbecue. Really? <laughs> Which barbecue? Oh, those Barker Finches at number 23. No, 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 I didn't go. Oh, and clearly the best people weren't invited. It's beyond me how she managed to lure the Douglas Cheater. <laughs> I'm surprised he wasn't far too busy supplying materials to build executive homes. Anyway, I think barbecues are rather passe these days. happened to that noble old man. Mm. He's fine. Are you sure he's fine? You're not shielding me. Well, make sure, will you, Daisy? You know how I worry. I'd have him here if he didn't make those funny noises. <laughs> no, well, pop upstairs, will you, and check now and give him my love. about that table, Elizabeth. I'm sure it's not beyond the bounds of Western technology to resurface it. <laughs> Why don't you try a little yoga, Elizabeth? Calm your nerves. Everywhere else, Hyacinth, my nerves are fine. It's just in this house I go to pieces. Daddy does yoga and look how fit he is for his age. Pronounced too hot to handle by the over-60s. <laughs> I'll be with you in a minute, Elizabeth. <laughs> oh. Oh. 
trouble is. Oh, Richard, I'm so sorry. For some reason, I go to pieces in this house. You too. <laughs> of sharing a breakfast habit with the Dutch royal family. <laughs> Tell Elizabeth how much you're enjoying your exclusive European high-fiber breakfast cereal. <laughs> yes, Daisy, I'm here. Daddy is where? On the roof. <laughs> well, get him down, dear. It's absolutely splendid of him to be so agile as to get on the roof. But why is he on the roof? Fire-watching. <laughs> he thinks there's a raid on. What a wonderful sense of duty Daddy has. It's that spirit that made this island great. Mm. But get him down, Daisy. Yes. Sound the old clear or something, will you? <laughs> you want my advice about what? Onslow? <laughs> well, you've never taken it before. <laughs> Would I be surprised if Onslow had another woman? My dear girl, I was surprised he got one in the first place. <laughs> massive appeal for women. He exudes a raw, sensual magnetism. Where's me bottle opener? That could have been him with Vivian Lee in Streetcar Named Desire. And now he started stopping out late at nights and looking at him from here. He looks to me like somebody who's up to his designer stubble in stolen moments of illicit love. I said, have you seen me bottle opener? I don't know how to handle it, our hyacinth. Maybe if you spoke to him, he'd listen to you. Well, maybe he wouldn't listen to you, but if you backed him into a corner, I'm sure he would. I could bring him over. Don't shout, Hyacinth! <laughs> All right, I won't bring him over. We'll arrange something else. You ring me? Promise? Father's still on the roof. Don't tell me. I've got my own troubles. Onslow, father's on the roof again. Ask him if he's got my bottle opener. <laughs> Why don't you wear it round your neck? I look like some big silly Doris with a dangler. I think he's got another woman. Maybe she's got his bottle opener. <laughs> Worry, Liz, it looks fine. Oh, yes, I think it looks all right, but you, you don't say no. I don't know why I get so nervous in here. It happens to lots of people, believe me. Well, look, I really ought to be going back home. Do you think it would be permissible for me to sneak away? Well, why not? I often do. <laughs> Will you make my excuses to Hyacinth? Weasley, she never listens anyway. <laughs> Elizabeth's gone? Yes. <laughs> Hope she wasn't worried about my table. She knows I never make a fuss about my things. <laughs> Phone, dear. She thinks that Onslow's got another woman. Onslow? Mm. 
I don't believe it. He couldn't afford one. <laughs> now, if it was old CP, uh, CP Benedict. I met him passing the library. Not the CP Benedict. He's just CP Benedict. <laughs> King. He runs a garden centre. But he? hasn't he been on television, dear, in that gardening programme? I think he has been. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, fancy you knowing C.P. Benedict. <laughs> Mind the eggs. <laughs> I wonder what she's like, his other woman. Short-sighted. <laughs> I bet she's cheap and common. Have you noticed how they all go for cheap and common? Don't knock it. I've had some of my best moments being cheap and common. <laughs> You're supposed to look guilty, Onslow. I keep telling you, there is no other woman. I've always been faithful to you and about three leading jockeys. Faithful? Men can't be faithful. They haven't got the necessary genes. Can you see me getting dressed up for other women? I'd have to shave for a start. Don't listen to him, Days. They don't always shave for other women. <laughs> I've had barbers rash more than once, I can tell you. <laughs> well, that's it, then. If he's going to have another woman, I'm going to have another man. <laughs> can you get somebody that can do a few jobs round here? <laughs> Didn't you tell me that you knew the C.P. Benedict? He's just a man with a garden centre who's been on television. He's not the Aga Khan. He's a celebrity, dear, and I'm sure he's a much better social catch than boring old Douglas Chater who's merely in building supplies. <laughs> Watch out for the lorry, dear. Station. It's not moving. I always think they're more worrying when they're not moving. Your friend, see He's Benedict, not my friend. Will be invited to something far more elegant than a common or garden barbecue. <laughs> For my summer entertaining, I intend to bring the outdoors indoors. Yeah. <laughs> you must find him, dear. I dare say you'll catch him at one of his regular haunts. Such as where? Well, he's your friend, Richard. You should know where he goes. I told you he's just an acquaintance. Mind a tree, dear. <laughs> it's the outside of the tree inside. 
Richard, do stop sounding petulant. I don't know why you're sounding so petulant. This is a great day for me. I have invented the outdoors, indoors luxury barbecue. I just wish that there wasn't so much outdoors, indoors in here. Look, dear. When I invite the garden centre king to my outdoors, indoors luxury barbecue, I want him to feel at home. He is a plant lover. Mind the hole in the road, dear. Yeah. What road? And what makes you think that I can see the road? Liz, a mobile garden has just parked in Harsin's Drive. <laughs> mobile garden? Oh, a good imitation, anyway. Good heavens! Well, you hear about the greenhouse effect. Next thing you know, it's parked outside. <laughs> I think Richard's under that lot somewhere. With Hyacinth? No, no, she escaped. She went indoors. <laughs> well, instead of giggling, you might go and give Richard a hand. I wouldn't walk into a jungle like that without a map and a compass. Fields <laughs> and oh, Do mind my wallpaper, Richard. Yeah. Hello, is that the vicar? You vicar, this is Harrison Bouquet. Are you there? <laughs> no, well, I thought I heard a little cry of pain. <laughs> I do believe the vicar's in pain, dear. Yeah, well, at least he's not covered in green fly. <laughs> now, if you're in distress, I'll come round immediately. Hello? <laughs> Are you there? No. Look, I was speaking to the vicar. Who is this? Oh, the vicar's wife. <laughs> How are you, dear? It's Hazard Bouquet. Yes. I was speaking with your husband. I see. He had to leave in rather a hurry. <laughs> Richard. Well, yes, of course, I'm sure you do, dear. It's not theological. <laughs> well, I'm just calling to invite yourself and your husband, the vicar, to my outdoors, indoors luxury barbecue with finger buffet. <laughs> oh, yes, you must come, dear. We're having C.P. Benedict. <laughs> What do you mean, hot or cold? <laughs> the C.P. Benedict, the garden centre king who's been on television. Not even asked him yet. I will as soon as you find out where he might be. You've got to make him realise that you're still attractive to men. If I get done up, do you think I will still be attractive to men? Oh, you can't go wrong. It's been my experience. I'll go for anything. Thanks. <laughs> Just put yourself in my hands our days, and I'll transform you. What you need is a little bit of inner confidence and a lot of flash gear. And then what? I don't think I know any men. What about Mr. Patterson? He was dead keen on you. He was a dirty old man. <laughs> well, just, just think of him as yesterday's toy boy. Day before yesterday. 
Are you sure your contact got it right? He said that CP always comes in shortly before they close. So why don't we wait outside until he arrives? No, no, no. It has to look like a casual encounter. I don't want him to think we're the kind of people who lie and wait for people. No, it has to look as though we're here doing banking business. We meet accidentally, you introduce me, and then I invite him to my outdoors, indoors luxury barbecue with finger buffet. <laughs> what banking business are we supposed to be here on? I mean, when I get to the window, I'm going to be asked what I want. To cash a check or something. Uh, good afternoon. I, uh, I won't be a moment. I won't keep you a moment. Uh, <clears throat> unexpected outlay. Uh, <clears throat> Five pounds? How would you like it? <laughs> I should have cashed the bigger check, but I felt such a fool. Are you sure he wasn't in there? He wasn't in there. I mean, what does C.P. Benedict look like? I see him as tall and tanned and distinguished. He's quite ordinary looking, really. Ordinary? Richard, I will not have you describe my guest of honor in that manner. <laughs> we cannot see the other entrance. We could miss him. We'll have to go back in. Again? <laughs> Richard, I've told everyone C.P. Benedict is coming, and C.P. Benedict is coming. Come along. No. What a pity. It'd go very nicely with my place settings. Not him. Six pounds. In ones, please. You wouldn't prefer sixty shiny new ten pence. <laughs> Are you sure this isn't him? He looks very suitable for my outdoors, indoors, luxury barbecue with finger buffet. It's not him. Well, I wonder if I should invite him in any case. <laughs> oh, no, I think not. We haven't been introduced. I'm sure it was charm so much as shock. Off you go then, dear. More plants. More plants? I want to make him feel at home. The whole point about my outdoors indoors barbecue is to make the indoors look like outdoors. Well, we won't be sure to change for a while, anyway. <laughs> Elizabeth, it's her, Cynthia. <laughs> you guessed. <laughs> now, look, I want to invite you and Emmett to my outdoors, indoors luxury barbecue with finger buffet. Hmm, this evening. Yes. Oh, you must come, dear. C.P. Benedict will be here. The C.P. Benedict <laughs> is the garden centre king. Oh, you know, the television celebrity. <laughs> See you at seven, then, dear. Goodbye. What the hell? 
hell is an outdoors indoors barbecue? I don't know, but it seems that we are going to one. But didn't you tell her I've got another engagement? What engagement? I'll, I'll think of something. <laughs> Apparently, C.P. Benedict is going to be there. C.P. who? Benedict, the garden centre king. Oh, how jolly. We'll be spellbound listening to his weed killer recipes all evening. I wouldn't mind some advice about my rubber plant. Well, if that's going to be the high spot of the evening, I think I might have a drink or two. You usually do on Hyacinth's occasions. And sometimes even before we get there. Take Richard and Emma to drink. I must be ready when CP arrives. What will they be drinking? Mm -hmm. Well, I know what Emma will have. Anything. Richard will have a sherry. I must remain calm. I must not appear uncalm. Don't forget the drinks. Oh, how do I look, dear? And don't spill them. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh, Elizabeth! And when I've no earrings! That's a large one, Liz. Oh. <laughs> Richard, I have a sherry for you, Richard. Liz, found your way there. I used to be a girl guide. to be in a hurry, the hallmark of the perfect hostess. But not now, I'm afraid, Daisy, dear. I'm expecting guests at any moment. I think he's got another woman. That's nice for him, dear. We must have a chat about it sometime. I will listen in our hyacinth. You will give my love to Onslow, won't you? And to Daddy, of course. How is Daddy? I do wish you could stay, but it's impossible. She'd like to stay for a while. Rose? I'd know those legs anywhere. CP! Rose! Too long. 